Hey everyone, Stucker here, and remember, if you like what you see, then please do go ahead and check out the links in the description, because you can join our Discord, as well as follow me on Twitch, where I play Paradox games, and if you want to play with me, like Hearts of Iron, then you can feel free to join me there. We usually have massive multiplayer games every Saturday. But anyway, now it's time. Yeah, among all the major nations that are here, we have not done a single one, we have only exclusively done minor nations so far. Which, I will be very honest, I find minor nations to be more fun in many cases. And after all, you know what they say about the political memes and Hearts of Iron players. But if we want something really fun and spicy, then I mean, there's options. Ah, the United States. Land of... Depression. God damn, that is a terrible effect. Though honestly, for many teens, I can't imagine that it's any different then than it is now. Now, if you've always wondered why in Play Guys they always say to try to take out the United States by 1940, 1941 at the absolute latest, it is because of this. Undisturbed isolation. It provides some absolutely horrible effects when it comes to your economy, and you can't get rid of it until you're above 50% war support, which is currently at 5%. Now, typically speaking, that's not going to really happen until you get into, depending on what happens with the AI, the late 1930s, like 1939, at the earliest, but usually it's more like 1940, 1941, around then. And you can see, the Great Depression provides 30% consumer goods. The Undisturbed Isolation provides 50% consumer goods. So when you go to construction, we have 128 civilian factories, but 105 of those are being used for consumer goods. The United States is quite literally a sleeping giant, but we want to get access to these as early as we possibly can. And so all the historical path would have us go down a slow, long, and painful recovery trying to get all of this fixed, where we have to focus on politics to actually support us. I think, uh... I think there's some more fun stuff that we could do. But if we want to get really spicy, we can't actually do anything until the president is currently not the president, which we can't do until 1936. And so because our political power is absolutely shattered by the Great Depression, we are going to not do anything for the next foreseeable future so that we can actually accumulate some. And so knowing that there's going to be a civil war here, we're going to go ahead and convert all of our little military factories that are over here to civilian factories so that we don't have to worry about uh, anyone being able to fight us. Because our power base, depending on how the Civil War goes, is more than likely going to be centered here in the south on the Rust Belt. Oh sweet Jesus, the research. We actually have four research slots to start with. Ah, oh, that is so much nicer. Look how many things we could research at the start of the game in comparison. And now we're just going to delete all of our little armies all over the world because we seem to have these tiny, tiny little garrisons dedicated to every single little stupid island that we control. And we have a stupidly large fleet that I don't even know what to do with, so we're just going to combine them and send them all together. And in total, holy shit, we have 229 ships. Oh, God, that includes, like, what? You got three carriers, you got 15 battleships, heavy crews. Dear God, we have a lot. Uh-huh. Well, I guess we'll just go ahead and get an admiral and send them to training, because that will allow us to get a ton of exercise going. And holy crap, we are getting 1.15 naval experience per day. That's not going to be overpowered at all here now, is it? And so we'll get the army and the navy training, use up all the equipment we can, because none of this actually matters here. Dear god, we're already at 85 naval experience. Hold on, hold on. That means... Can we go and get naval reform, naval experience gain plus 15%? That... Okay, we're just going to go ahead and do that. I should have done that earlier, because what that's going to bump us up to now... All right, we're, we're getting the 1.152. We're, we're getting a lot. Now, you see, we got 150 political power, which means the first thing that we have to do is get a silent workhorse because, again, we're really, really depressed. At least now we're gaining a little bit more. Oh, look, we can get a naval doctrine. <laughs> all right, now that we got rid of all of our military factories on over this side of the map, it is time to start focusing on building up our military factories and where we're actually going to need them. It's Ohio, that means Michigan, Indiana, essentially everything we would commonly associate with the Rust Belt. All of this is going to be ours. Okay, November 1936. That means that we can actually change our government and start actually for the first time in this game doing a goddamn focus tree. Alf Landon, welcome. I don't think that you're going to be here for very long. But now we can immediately move to reestablish the gold standard, and we can start our way down here. Honestly, look at this. I, I, maybe I need to do a democratic run of the future. I, I haven't even managed anything with politics. How am I popular? I'm popular by doing nothing. Wait, this sounds like the U.S. government. All right, America first, baby. Also, we are getting way up there in terms of naval experience. Uh, I think that. <laughs> I think this is why this is so abusable. All right, that's America first, but we can't actually ally with the Silver Shirts until we get more than 10% support for the Silver Legion. So, I mean, I guess while we wait, we just have to fight depression. And, of course, get some uh, fascism going. Hmm, gets event protests in the capital. This will move you closer to a civil war. Hmm. 
Listen, guys, everything is fine. There, there's nothing, there's nothing weird going on here at all. But just in case, let's get some foreign supporters. Oh, and work with the Bund. That's exactly what we need. Make sure that if in the event that of a civil war that we're going to still have Ohio, Missouri, Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, Michigan. Essentially everything that is in the Rust Belt as we associate it. Oh, okay. This is where things are going to start getting spicy because the 10 million men march. We are, uh, we're going to start getting events that are going to lead us towards the civil war now, I think. Okay, and they're going to start raiding our equipment, so in order for us to limit this, to remove what it is that we have to deal with, I think it's time that we go as far into the negatives on infantry equipment as we possibly can. Okay, so they're, they're raiding, but there's no guns for them to take, so now we're just going to lose stability. Okay, now rather than deregulate here, we need to get here to recruit the Free Corps, because the moment that war breaks out, you want to have recruit the Free Corps because that's going to allow you to raise a whole bunch of soldiers at the same time. All right, and I have a feeling that war is going to break out here soon, so we're just going to go ahead and delete the majority of our army to get our stuff back in here. Because I still want to be in the negatives on guns, let's go ahead and just add some cavalry to it, basically as much as we can. Oh, okay, immediate event has happened here. We have the Boston Rebellion. I think, what, are we at war now? Okay, Midwest declares for the government, as they naturally should. That is good. So now we have a lot of troops still. Okay, so we got all these for the Free Corps. Now, because I know that some shit is going to be blowing up here soon, we're going to do... I'm going to take all these, divide these two into two. So let's go ahead and quickly spawn out these cavalry that we had here, even though they're half-trained. Let's go ahead and have them make a beeline towards all of these little territories here. Let's see, I know that the West is going to be going against me, which means that we need to go ahead and create a little fallback line. I think it's somewhere here in Texas that this is all going to be happening. So we're just going to make a line and see what it is that we can do here. So much equipment, thank you. Oh, Rebellion is spreading to the West Coast. Okay, see, this is, this is what I figured. I figured this is what would be happening. Still hold the center of the country. Okay, so they're going to be rebelling. It's fine. It's fine. We can just knock this out here. Because they were going to have no factories whatsoever. I realize, wait a minute, we're actually now in a state of war. That means we can go from economy of undisturbed isolation to partial mobilization immediately. Oh, shit. Washington itself is trying to rebel against me. I, I don't want that. All right, come on, New York. Stop being a pain in the ass. I know we have all these little units in here that are spread out. God, this is a lot of, a lot of really shitty micro. That's, that's pretty much all this is, is a lot of shitty micro. Okay, MacArthur is called to leave the government. Okay, yes, desperate times call for desperate measures. MacArthur, you're now in charge, which means, actually, that's going to give us huge discounts on military stuff here. So let's actually go ahead and get a logistics expert. Let's start cranking out some more army experience and we can get some more bonuses here. And now we're actually not going to push west. We are going to let them try and take as much land as they possibly can. The, the reason being is that we actually want the we, we want this war to go on a bit longer. We need it to go on a little bit longer because you can only complete this focus tree in the event that we're in a civil war. All right, that secures the northeast with the exception of that. Wait, they own the lake. So wait a minute, I control all the land of New York City, but for some reason, the rebels have control of the the lake. Okay. Honor the Confederacy, boys. Here we go. All right, now we can celebrate Montgomery Convention Day. Okay, that's fine. Uh, we can move the government to Richmond. And we can enshrine state rights. Yes. All right, perfect. That That seems fine. And there we go. Constitutional Convention. Welcome, everyone, to the Confederate States of America, led by none other than Douglas MacArthur. <laughs> Wait, do I still have... I still have political issues despite the fact that I'm fascist. Wait, what? Wait a damn minute. I probably should not have ignored all those events then. God damn it. And there we go. The regular United States has fallen and the Confederate States of America has risen. Here we go, boys. Mind you, it's 1939 and we already have 170 civ factories with, I mean, we're on partial mobilization, so we're at least able to use half of that. But on top of that, we got <laughs> 67 mill factories going right now. This just, it doesn't seem fair. Now we can start focusing on getting more fun stuff. Well, Cuba, I am so sorry, but it is time for you to go. And in the meantime, let's start preparing against, um, 
you know, our other southern neighbor. Cuba has joined the Allies. Oh, boy. Uh, well, I guess that's what happens. Hmm. Uh, the United Kingdom, Denmark, uh, France. <laughs> Wait a minute. Cuba, why would you do that? You know, why would you go and do a silly little thing like that? Well, I mean, I guess if we have to. It's not like they're going to be able to really resist us now, is it? Oh, we're just going to start pouring across the Canadian border. Oh, shoot. Uh, yeah, we just lost access to all of our rubber. I kind of forgot about that. Oh, well, it is just getting more and more intense over here. There we go. Just slowly making our way north. Just, just you know, moving on through. Doing whatever we can. I love fighting in Canada. If I could just fucking knock them out here. Oh, there we go. All right. Canada has fallen. That clears out at least that path of resistance. Wow, okay, hold on, I wasn't expecting that. Um, I was prepared to go to war with Mexico, but they're like, now we're just gonna become your puppet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, Mexican Junta, thank you so much for joining me here. Though you're probably gonna end up going and having a revolt here at some point, I'm pretty sure. I guess you know what time it is, baby. It's Manifest Destiny. Hmm, the Chester Concession. Hmm, well, let's see, I'm gonna give you some help if you, you know, give me right to your resources. Well, it's okay. I mean, well, listen, as it said, like, they're denying us, but we're still the free American empire, so we're always the winners. God, we, we can't actually do anything here until we are able to navally invade. The Philippines has joined the Chinese United Front. Wait, wait a goddamn minute. Wait a minute. Or sorry, is Japan not going to be declaring war on me then? Okay, well. <laughs> okay. I guess I never had the Philippines here as a puppet. All right, that's fine. Sorry about that, buddy. You know... We gotta secure our borders, that's all I'm saying. God, I cannot believe that I'm still fighting over goddamn Canada after all this time. But you know what's nice? Because we're America, that means that we can build the most stupidly expensive tank possible, and it's not actually going to do anything to hurt us. I mean, wait a minute, hold on. We, we could actually join the same faction as Japan. We don't have to team up with Germany, we could team up with Japan. You know what? Okay. I'm gonna join the e Greater East Asian Co-Prosperity Sphere. <laughs> Cause why not? We just gotta go ahead and move our troops around and prepare to finish off the last couple people that resisted. <laughs> there we go, that finally wipes out the last of this resistance here in the north. But I think it's time that we consolidate our control down here. And sorry Haiti, we gotta consolidate things a little bit more here too. Protect South America. <laughs> Listen, I swear, I'm not evil. I'm just securing American interest. Infrastructure for everybody. We got the American industry, so let's just keep going. All right. British, it's time to bring the revolution to you. <laughs> British 2, Electric Boogaloo. Let's go ahead and secure the Highlands. When Scotland shouts freedom, they mean America. Paraguay rejects our guidance. Ah, oh, no, Paraguay. That's not nice. Venezuela is rejecting. Uruguay. Peru. Ecuador. What? None of these guys wants our guidance. I find that to be terribly rude, don't you think? And I'm sorry, Colombia. Listen, you should have listened to me. You didn't, and now you're gonna pay the price. All right, well, time to go on the attack. We're just gonna go ahead and claim everything. Sorry. Yep, we're just gonna crank up that army experience and work our way down. There's literally no point to any of this. Britain, I'm so sorry, but London Bridge is burning down. Well, there's that. All right, there we go. First peace deal, done. Oh. Oh my god, Italy and Germany, what the fuck did you do here? Wait, why are we gonna get a puppet focus against the American East Indies when we own it? Wait, what? Oh, Paradox, your shit is buggy. I guess we just get a free puppet that is already our puppet? I, I don't, I don't know, I'm so confused. See, the Germans and the Soviets can kill each other all they want. I, my friend, am about to take out the Japanese. Well, now's as good a time as ever. Oh, well, hello, Tokyo. Goodbye, Tokyo. Oh, we're just gonna let them continuously grind against us over here, because London appears to be a battle zone. Oh, and like that, the Blue Devil is sweeping down through Tokyo and Japan. That's fine. Japan is now my puppet. Which means I think we, now we can focus on the Germans. Ah, uh, time for a little counterattack. Oh, wow, that is a lot of boats sunk. <laughs> oh my god. All right, boys, you know what time it is. It's time for D-Day. Don't mind us just grinding our way down. Uh, just watching that line spread. Oh, you sneaky little German bastard. There we go. Come on, Germany. You were so close to falling. Just go ahead and give up, please. 
And there we go. Germany is gone. All right, sweet. And that, oh, wow, that actually gave the Soviet Union quite a bit. We're not at war with them, are they? No, no, we're not at war with the Soviets. All right, Italy, now it's your turn. Well, that went quicker than expected. God damn it, finally. And everyone, there you have it. The great American empire that rose from the Confederacy, but for some reason, because of the stupid way that graphical systems work, it glitched out and made it the free American empire instead of the Confederacy. Well, either way, it has been way too long, and this thing is done. Uh, but that was... Wow. Um, when, you're, when you're playing as America, and you're able to just produce infinite amounts of equipment, this is... Um, this is really, really stupid. Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed today's episode, and please let me know what it is that you would like me to do next. Uh, I am very curious to see what is going to be happening, and there are any number of other things that we will be able to do. So, I wish you all a good rest of your day. Make sure to join Discord, Twitch, everything, and I will see you all next time. Bye, guys.